guys, talk, uh, people talking about Stellato. Yeah, um, he had a couple of moments where he was fired up, but you know, I, I think he was just. I mean, that's him being a competitor. Um, so, and you know, I it was good to see him get more opportunities throwing the ball, uh, catching the ball, because I mean, he's thought he played. He probably played better than you know his. He's played better this year than his stats will show. And that's kind of the probably the frustrating part, but I, I didn't see it as anything other than just him being competitive and wanting the football, like any uh, any good receiver is. Uh, but uh, TPC, I, welcome back. I was just uh, I was Thank asking you. kind of what it, I was you know when I was kind of giving my rundown on what I thought about the the, the defense. Um, I, I hit on some of the positives. Um, what did you see uh, that you? that you didn't like? What did you see that you did like um, and with the first team? We'll, we'll talk about the, the backups in a, in a second. Okay. Uh, first team, um, you know, I think the, the, the front front seven played pretty well today. Um, uh, AJ Hoffler caught my eye a few times. I think he yeah, played he really well um, in, in place of Peter Woods, who, who did not play today. Um, and just seeing him opposite TJ Parker, TJ Parker finally flashed today for me. Uh, he was in there making plays, uh, you know, causing turnovers, um, all sorts of stuff. So the, I think the defensive ends really, really played, um, a stand up game today and, and, and really played well. Um, you know, some of the, <coughs> uh, just allowing, you know, the quarterback to get, get out of the pocket sometimes and, and, and pick up some yards that way, I think was, um, but I, I really saw that going in with uh, C.J. Bailey. He was able to kind of, you know, pick up yardage when they needed it at times, and I thought he would be able to do that because of uh, just his athleticism and, and his ability to kind of escape the pocket. I, I figured that would happen, but overall I think the the, the first-team defense played really well. Uh, Keppelman check for the most part. Uh, North Carolina State kind of had a few moments here and there where they were able to move the ball on that first team defense. But for the most part, um, we really did shut them down as far as it, the offense goes, uh, the NC State offense. They couldn't really do very much consistently. And although they had a couple moments where they were able to move the ball, um, in the end, Clemson's defense bowed up, made them kick that field goal. They missed it. <clears throat> um, so I think for the most part, you got to be pretty happy with the defense. Still cleaning up some tackling stuff. Uh, I think, but um, much better day from the the ends, I think, in just showing their presence on the field and that being felt by the opposing quarterback. Um, they were kind of living in that backfield for a, a good portion of the day. They were really giving that offensive line fits, uh, ticking off that left tackle from North Carolina State. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, Belton. Rotated. What's that? Yeah, Bel Belton, uh, the, the one that spit. Yeah, yeah, the one that yeah. spit got himself in trouble, um, but you know, overall, I think it was uh, pretty positive for the first team defense. Um, and AJ Hoffler, I think, is the guy that flashed for me the most today, um, which is really encouraging because we've talked about kind of the depth of that defensive end group and you know, really the lack of depth that we have in that defensive end group uh, outside of TJ Parker. And Peter Woods, obviously, Peter Woods not able to go today. And I think A.J. Hoffler made the, me the most of his opportunities. You felt his presence on the field. He looked fast. He looked he looked confident out there. Uh, T.J. Parker made it made his presence felt as well. So, overall, I think uh, the defensive ends really flashed for me today on the defense. Yeah, I, I'm with you. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I think that's – uh, pretty good summary of the. Uh, I think there are definitely still some things that need to be cleaned up. I mean, clearly, I mean, this defense. I think per personnel-wise, especially in you know your your starting eleven, um, still really really good. Um, but they have they there's still certainly a, a growth um, period that I think they're going through as well. And we just the great thing is is they're allowed to do that now because you have an offense that can score. <laughs> Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I think that's that, that's the um, exciting thing, you know, moving forward. Um, let me see. Any, anything else? You know, special teams was 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 pretty good today. Yeah, it was um, fine. You, you know, no, I, nothing really of note there. So 
which is yeah, usually I mean, good. Nolan Hooser but, made made his field goals. Um, there you go. Yeah, and uh, Robert Gunn touchback on every. I think he got a. He was a touchback on every kickoff. So that was every good. kick. They didn't. They didn't return any of the any of the kickoffs. Yeah, uh, um, Nolan Hooser still a hundred percent on the season. Um, so you got to be happy with that. Yeah. Um, and then and uh, I thought the return do. game. I thought the return yeah. game was good too. Uh, Antonio. Yeah, Antonio Williams. Yeah, broke that broke that really nice uh, return at the almost almost at the end of the half of the first half mm-hmm. to kind of give Clemson a chance to punch it in. They didn't end up punching it in, but Nolan Hoosier goes ahead and puts three on the board, and we go we go to the half uh, with forty five points. So, uh, hey, and and you know you know well, while you weren't able to punch it in on that drive, I mean, Cade showed a lot of. Uh, poise and what well, growth from last season, you yeah. know, throwing the ball out at the back of the end zone on that third down. And, and you know, yeah, instead of chance. trying to force something and yeah. getting a catastrophic turnover deep in the red zone, which is what he would have done last season. What he would have done last season was exactly what you're, you're pointing out. He would have forced the ball into the end zone somewhere and possibly got an interception. And then that took three points off the board, right? Or, or last year, what it really would have been was a pick six. And a hundred yard return the other way. That's what it would have been last year because we were we were um, putting all sorts of catastrophic turnovers um, on display last season. But um, it does show Cade's growth. What what it also shows is if you remember North Carolina State's drive before Clemson started calling timeouts. Yeah, right. With like a minute to go in the half. That shows that this coaching staff really does believe in that first team offense and their ability. They wanted to give them a chance to go down and score again, um, and although they didn't seal the deal, they did get that field goal on the um, on the board. And you know, to your point, Cade made a really good decision by, hey, everybody's covered up. And let's go ahead and throw it out of the back of the end zone. Let's let Nolan get a chance to put three on the board, and that's exactly what happened. So, I, I like the aggressiveness from the coaching staff there at the end of the half, um, and then obviously Cade's decision making in the red zone, recognizing what the game was. Um, and that you still had a field goal uh, if you if you if you didn't have a, a throw open. So um, I think that's a huge positive and, and it shows growth. I, I do want to uh, kind of transition, talk about that second half um, and well, really that 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 uh, fourth quarter. And yeah. just kind of, it, it, we don't have to spend a, a whole lot of time on it, uh, but clearly, you know, the the defensive uh, backups and well, third stringers and, you know, you got a lot of your walk ons in, um, you know, obviously you want to see them finish a lot better. That was, uh, you know, some of those plays where we're kind of disappointing, you know, in that second and in those series like NC State was running the ball at will. They were kind of getting whatever they wanted. Um, just kind of a, a lack of of uh, effort that, and, and kind of want to from that. Um, from those those second and, and third string guys and um so like i think you know to put all of that in perspective because uh, there were a lot of people complaining that uh, about that at the beginning of the show i i really am not you know particularly you know concerned about that it feels yeah. good that you know you can get those guys uh, opportunities in the game it's kind of how i felt about the app state game um and, and some of the plays they gave up in that second half um yeah. I mean, this is ultimately this is a product of the last three years. You know, you're playing in fourth quarter games basically all season because you're not taking care of business uh, with your first team. Um, so you haven't been able to to develop the depth like like Clemson used to do back. You know, during the playoff era, mm-hmm. um, the playoff years, because and, and so now you're you're having to get a lot of these guys opportunities that they haven't been able to get in in years past. And you have a lot of young guys and a, a lot of young players. Um, so I, I thought the good thing was is the coaches were, you know, they kept up that same intensity throughout the entire right. game. Yep. Nick Eason, and, you know, after I don't, I don't remember which particular touchdown, one of NC State's touchdown drives it was, but Nick, you could see Nick Eason on the sideline absolutely ripping into everybody. <laughs> not not just the defensive line, but yeah. everybody. Um, so, you know, I, I think that's um, encouraging. Yes. Uh, and so, you know, obviously things got to you got to get better there because it wasn't just all backups. There were a couple of starters in that, that made a couple of mistakes. Jaden Lucas, you're in phase. Why are you why are you grabbing and, and, and getting a P.I.? Like, what are you doing, man? What are yeah, you doing? You're, you're a third year player. Can't do that. Um, 
And, and, that, and that was my, it's like, why are you, what are you grabbing for? You're in right. phase. It was good technique. It, it, you're fine. It, it, you turn, you turn around and get your head around. So why are you hug? Why are you bear hugging the guy? You were exactly, he was exactly where he needed to be. Right. There was no reason to grab him, hold him, cause any sort of a PI. You, you were in perfect position to make a play on the ball. Just turn around. Uh, but you know, yeah. So it just stuff like that needs to get better. And yeah, you had some walk-ons. I mean, you had a, a lot of walk-ons in you had a couple of the line that, and they were getting NC state's offensive line was getting pushed, but NC state had a couple, had some of their backups in too. So, you know, you can't, right. that, that excuse. So they absolutely need to play better. Um, and, but the good thing is, and, and we were talking about it before the show, like that's going to be great teach tape for these guys, um, you know, in, in practice. So, um, yeah. Love that you know we're complaining about the defense in a, uh, in a game that we scored fifty nine points and and not a uh, a game that you were fighting tooth and nail to to win. So yeah, uh, you you gotta you gotta love that for sure. Um, from the fans' perspective, it's a tough pill to swallow, right? Seeing that thirty five burger up on the board when you know if you watch the game, you know how lopsided this game was. It was never in doubt. NC State wasn't close. From the jump, it was clear that Clemson was going to physically dominate this game and dominate it on the scoreboard, which is exactly what they did. But from a fan's perspective, you hate to see that 35 points on the board. Yeah, You hate to see 21 points get put on your defense's head, regardless of who was in the game um, in the fourth quarter. Um, with that said, this is an amazing problem to have. Because we haven't last year, the year before, we weren't able to put in backups. We weren't able to develop young players with real game experience because we were constantly fighting tooth and nail to win games. So although the fan and although the fan of me doesn't like to see that 35, if you truly understand what that 35 means and that what that's gonna mean for development of the depth and the young players on this roster. It's really what you it, – it's okay, right? Yeah. Um, you don't like to see it, but it's okay. And it's it's going to pay huge dividends later this season, next season, when you have to rely on some of these young guys, whether it's due to injury um, or, or whatever the case may be, right? You may have to rely on some of these young guys later this season, definitely next season, because certain parts of your roster are going to turn over, whether it be the NFL or the transfer portal, right? So – being able to get guys like that real game time experience and then allow them to go out there and make the mistakes um, is great. Um, now, there were some effort, a lack of effort plays there, and I think that's where you saw a guy like Nick Eason and some of the other coaching staff really laying into them because it felt like in that fourth quarter there was a lack of intensity on the Clemson sideline, right? You can't allow that to creep in, right? Um, the game was not over. Although yeah. there was no possible way NC State was going to put up enough points to win the game, that doesn't matter. You have to finish the game, right? You can't just chalk it up to, oh, we're already up so much. The game's pretty much over. You have to continue that intensity. And I like to see that hard coaching on the sideline. That's what you expect out of a guy in Nick Eason. Um, and you love to see it. And you love to see those young guys being held to the same standard as those first teamers, right? Uh, because – the standard is the standard, right? If you're out there and you got that that orange helmet on with that white pole on the side of it, there's a certain level of, of expectation when you're out there on that Clemson defense, right? Um, and they clearly did not hold up in the fourth quarter. But to your point, Jordan, that's going to be amazing tape for the coaches to use in practice and develop these young players and show them um, and teach some of our guys that weren't necessarily – depth pieces hey look at this effort that you gave on this play especially that last touchdown right uh to me that was like a lack of effort touchdown yeah, like yeah, that never happened uh the defense kind of gave up and just let them run into the end zone um and you just can't let that kind of stuff happen but the coaches i think will do uh plenty to clean that up uh you got to feel great it's 59 to 35 um clemson absolutely dominated the game and for the second week in a row you were able to clear the benches and really get some depth pieces, valuable game time experience. 
and that cannot be replaced. And that's something Clemson has not been able to do in quite some time. So although it's tough to see 35 points, enjoy it because we got to empty our benches today against a power five conference foe. Yeah. That's a big deal. Very big deal. Regardless, that's a big and, deal. And, I lo- and again, you and I both, we love that it was against Dave Dorn and NC State. So. Absolutely. 